Yeah, that is busted. Like, how is that a thing? Hey guys, it's Dan, and welcome back to Unified Gaming. So in this one, I want to break down my two-bar Arcanist PvP build for the current patch. This thing is ridiculous. It has over 7,000 weapon damage, over 2k regens, 30k armor, and this is without stupidly proxies. It's just amazing. It works in battlegrounds, serial duels, you name it, solo and group play. It is honestly, if you ask me, the best Arcanist build out there. And I've been running it for the past six, seven weeks at least now on streams and stuff. It is solid. As always, I'm gonna go through everything you need to know, gear, skills, sets, all that good stuff. So do pay close attention. If you like what I do here, then do like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps. And as always, a huge thanks to everyone at Patreon who helps make these videos possible and get the unique perks. This details down below. So what are we doing? For our race, you want to be a Dark Elf. Dark Elf gives you access to Magicka and Stamina. It increases your Flame Resist, and it gives you Weapon and Spell Damage. This is really nice as our skills scale with Magicka and Stamina and Damage, and we can boost the damage with our passives. We also get the Flame Resist, which helps being a Vampire, which we are, so this is a really nice race for this playstyle. If you're not this race, a Khajiit is not a bad option in all honesty, or an Orc Stroke High Elf, or Breton Stroke Imperial. In all honesty, the race choice will not make or break this build. But if you could pick a new one, go with Dark Elves if you really want. As with our attributes, I've got 32 in health and 32 in magicka. General rule of thumb is aim for 30, 32,000 health roughly, and that's with um, Undaunted Metal, and that's with Tri-Stack Glyphs, ideally on all the big pieces at least, and then everything else in Magicka. If your race is different to mine, then do tweak this a little bit, but aim for the 30k health first, and then everything else into Magicka. Our regions are on 1900 without any potions, so we're really, really good sustain-wise, and our armor, when we buff up, as you'll see, it goes all the way up to 28k, so we have plenty and plenty of armor. As for our front bar, we also have 5.2k weapon damage, and when we buff up, it's 7,000 plus. It's stupidly good, and this is at all times as soon as we get into combat. And that crit resist, we are using Rallying Cry, so it does go up to almost 3k, so don't worry about that. For our Mundus, we are using the Warrior Mundus. Now, this does increase our healing because some of our heal scale of damage, and as we stack damage so high and we have some damage boost in passives as an Arcanist, this does get even boosted further. If you want to eke out more damage on targets though, the Lover is slightly higher, the Shadow is also a really good option, and the Thief for just crit chance that works too. For our consumables, I use Jewels of Misrule. This is health and magicka and stamina recovery, so you get max health and those two regens. It is probably the best build for uh, this, sorry, the best food for this type of build. There is a gold version, it's stupidly expensive, I've got 26k on this character, I'm not going to run it, I just, it's just too expensive. This is cheap, run this and you'll be okay. Your wallet will thank me, honestly. If you want to get the gold food though, it is called Smoked Bear Haunch, it is really really good, just very expensive, and it's only marginally better. Potion wise, if you're a long time fan of the channel, you know it's tri -stat potions. They cover everything you need, they give you health, they give you magicka, they give you stamina, you're low on something, pop one of these. Use it as a pseudo heal if you need to. If you want more specialized potions though, Essence of Immovability is very good, but they can be expensive. As for our skills and stuff, I just want to point out really quick that we are a vampire on this build. And being a vampire gives us some really good benefits. Undeath is amazing. It's like an extra defense set. It is phenomenal. Run this, just, it's so good. We also get Strike from the Shadows. And as we use Elusive Mist, we do proc this. So just by doing a few things, we can get our damage up really high, really quick. An Elusive Mist can help be a gap close to chase people. It gives us movement speed, or it can also be a skill to get us out of trouble. So again, it does two purposes. Plus it gives us damage. So be a vampire is kind of what I'm saying. And before you worry, I know you get more fire damage taken and your skills cost more, but we have really high sustains as you saw, and because we're a Dark Elf, we can circumvent a lot of those problems. As for our skills, on our primary bar, we are using Sivlax Flail, I think it's pronounced. This is phenomenal. Honestly, just listen to what it does. It does damage, it heals you, it gives you crux, which boosts your other skills damage, it immobilizes the target, it doubles as a execute, and it also debuffs the enemy, making you do, more, even, do even more damage. It is that freaking good. Honestly, this is the best skill Arcanist has, in my opinion. It's consistently hard hitting, it just does so much for so little, and because it's an AoE, you can't dodge it. So, 
learn to use a skill. I do know that some people don't want to play in melee, and I do appreciate that. So if you were to change it, you can go down to the Herald of the Tome and get Rune Blades, and then get Escalating Rune Blades. If you do this though, you will need to get your stamina higher, which would then mean that this is a stamina skill, but your heal on the back bar, which is Magicka, is then going to be a stamina, so you will need to play around with the stats and the regens particularly. As for the other skills, I use Pragmatic Fate Carver. This is really good. Um, you essentially shoot, shoot a big green beam. It is the Arcanist defining skill. If you don't use this, why be an Arcanist? It's that simple. We use this and we charge up the Crux from our spammable. And then we, when we get three Crux, it does 99% more damage, so double damage every 0.3 seconds. This has a 5k tooltip when we're buffed almost. So 5k, 0.3 sec seconds, that's 15k in a second. With two Crux, it's 30k in a second. It's stupidly good if you can land it on people. To help land it, I do use Rune of the Colorless Pole, which is a stun. This is a delayed stun, which is really good. So you cast it and a second later they get stunned. It also debuffs them with vulnerability, so they take more damage and you get more crit damage. So this is really, really nice. They can't dodge this, but they can block it. So just do factor that in. But because this is a uh, delayed stun, you can cast this and then go into your Fate Carver and you will often land at least one second of this so you get a good amount of damage out of this skill. I also use Blood Craze on this. This is a bleed. It gives us a dot. It gives us a small heal over time. But because it's bleed damage, it procs hemorrhaging, which debuffs the enemy and they lose 10% of the max health, which is amazing, especially against a class with health-based heals. And it's also a nasty dot. It actually hits quite hard. So this is a really good skill to run. I then use Recuperative Tree Ties. This gives you extra damage on your other skills. So every five seconds you do a bit more damage and it restores magic and stamina. This is worth, you know, about 150 regen roughly. So this is really good. And it also gives you weapon and spell damage at all times. So use this. There is another morph which is inspired scholarship and it does give you even more damage but the sustain is quite noticeable and it's not really worth the bonus damage. So I would recommend this morph if you are going to play this build. As for the ultimate, I use Ice Comet, but I sometimes use the Tide King's Gaze. It really depends on the situation. You see at the start of the clip, I'm using Ice Comet and I literally one shot that DK from 30k health and kill him in like one to two seconds. It is insane. So this is stupidly high burst. You can use Dawnbreaker if you prefer as well. That also works. But the Tide King Gaze is more damage. So essentially what you need to ask yourself is do you want burst or do you want kind of pseudo burst where it's more delayed and if you land it it is higher essentially i cast ice comet then rune of the colorless pool and then fate carver what will happen is ice comet will put the little circle around them it will start to spawn they will get stunned they're then stunned meteor then hits them or ice comet they take the full damage of that you also have the fate carver again on them at this point so they take so much damage really quick so that's how i use that combo if you use the Tide King's Gates, it's the same combo. The issue is that this has a bit of a movement issue, so it, it kind of tracks the target and they can avoid a lot of it. So you often miss a couple of ticks and you don't get all of the damage to give you that high burst that the Comet does give you instead. For the Bat Bar, we use Crux Weaver Armor. This is a necessity, you have to run this. And then have Impervious Room Ward. This is a really big shield. It's like a pseudo burst still. If you're low health and you think you're going to get executed, cast this and then cast a heal like Rune Mend. You can then also heal yourself if you have Crux, which is nice, but this is like your pseudo oh no button. We then have Elusive Mist, which gets us out of trouble. We can mist form away, get a movement speed buff to sprint further. We can avoid a few projectiles. It's really good. We then also have Rune Guard of Freedom. This is like a buff, so you cast this, it gives you minor resolve, giving you more damage, it gives you minor protection, giving you damage reduction, and if you fall below 50% health, you get a heal. You also get CC immunity as well for 6 seconds, but it does have a 30 second cooldown. The other thing to note as well is that with that 50% health proc, if you do fall below 50% health and you recast and take damage from a dot, for example, that was already on you, this will then reproc. So you can also use this as a pseudo heal when you're low health too, and just keep spamming it. And it's not a bad hill, as you can see, almost 10k. We then have Swarm and Sion, which is our ultimate. You can use any ult on the back bar, but I use this because it's like the best defense ult. If you're going to die and this is up, just cast and you, you go back to full health. It's really, really good. So this is a really good kind of all no button. If you want to use one of the class ones, though, Gibber and Shield's not bad. I just prefer this. Back bar skill wise, I don't change many of these. And I know some people go, we well, could use Vigor. Vigor is good. 
and I have used Vigor, I do like Vigor, and when we buff up fully it's like a 20k tooltip, but I find the Rune Guard of Freedom gives us the armour and it also has a good heal and it's a burst heal, so this is just better in my opinion. There is one flex spot, just a note if you were interested, and there's a skill called Arcanist Domain, you can then morph it down to Zenith's Empowering Disc, and this will essentially give you minor fortitude, minor intellect, minor endurance, which is all regen stuff, minor courage, more damage, and it sort of sticks to you. So when you have this, you can, this can kind of buff yourself or allies. It's really good. The issue is it's kind of where does it go? So if you go in group play in Cyrodiil, I you run this as part of a group, it really helps because everybody gets this buff and it's just amazing. If you're playing solo, I would generally keep the skills I have listed already. Now, when we'll go through the sets, for our sets, I am using Ravaging. The Ravager set is phenomenal. I've been running this set now for all of the last patch since the class came out. It is that good. So what does it do? Each time you try to reduce the target's armor, you gain a second Ravager, increasing your damage by 142. At four stacks, it doubles, so essentially 10 seconds. So that 142 times four, you're looking sort of almost 500 damage roughly, yeah? That's like Clever Alchemist. Now the problem is, this is really hard to proc on any other class. However, because we're an Arcanist, we have Crux Weaver armor, which applies minor breach when people hit us. They hit us, they get their armor reduced, that procs Ravenger. As soon as we take damage, this will proc. Because it's got five seconds, this procs every single second, and it charges ridiculously quick. Like we sit at max stacks most of the fight. So this is really good. And what makes it even better is when we have this proc'd, because it's a proc with a duration, it puts a buff on our character, so when we swap bar, as you'll see, this buff still stays active, which is why this is such a good set, because we can carry all of this damage over to the back bar and in increase our healing if it scales of damage. So this is why it's a really good set. We then complement this with Rallying Cry. Rallying Cry does a similar thing. When you heal yourself, you get almost 300 weapon and spell damage, and you get crit resist. This is really good because this is again a buff on you. So you heal yourself, you get bonus damage, you get critical resistance, so it makes you tankier, and because it's a buff, you can carry that buff to the front bar. So when this is on, we move to the front bar, we have the um, Rallying Cry buff, we also have the Ravenger buff, so we have loads of damage now, and that's how we're stacking our damage so high, so easily. It's why it's such a good combo. To boost the damage further, I use Nernhode on the mace, and I use Charge on the offhand. The reason I use Charge is because the Arcanist does have some passives that really help with their um, status effects. So Psychic Liaison increases your chance of status effects, and it also increases their damage. So by having more status effects, the fact that we have a Flame Glyph, Fire, we have Poison, Poison status, we have Bleed from our skill, Bleed status, we have Magic skills, so we also have the overcharge, we have the physical skills, we also have the um, Saundered, I think it's called. All of these things proc really easily, so we get loads of bonus effects and they all actually do damage. So this is why this is a really good trait to run. So as a result, we can't run poisons on the front bar, we run them on the back bar. On the back bar, I use defending and I use reinforced. I've gone with poisons, just double dot or whatever you want, basically. For the rest of it, I use one piece Baron Thrisk and one piece uh, Rakosa, but ideally Magma Incarnate. Magma Incarnate is better, I just have not had the drop and I've been farming it for ages. I've kind of given up at this point. So ideally, one Baron Thrisk and one Magma Incarnate. You're probably asking, well Dan, why not Rose, Rose Guy? It gives you like 300 regen. Yes, it does. But 300 regen is not as good as 250 at all times. Using Baron Thrisk and Mag Magma Incarnate, which is the same two piece, by the way, same one piece, you essentially get all of that regen all of the time. So you have to be in combat for 25 seconds for Rose God to then beat that combo that I've just listed. And at which point, you should you should have killed the person by then. So I just use Baron Thrisk. It works better with one of these, one Magma or one Rose God, because you get that sustain at all times. I then have Ravaging on the chest with Reinforced, try stats. I then use Rally and Cry Sash. I then have Trainee, well fitted. I then have Ravenger Greaves, and I then have Ravenger Feet. You want to go with five, uh, so you want to go with um, three, three, one. So three medium, three heavy, one light, light on the waist, heavy on the chest, the legs. Ideally, go with feet if you can, because then that will pair up nicely, and go medium on the uh, monster piece. 
and that'll give it a nice and medium on the hands. I then use Sea Serpent's Coil to boost the damage even higher. While you're at full health, you do get Sea Serpent's Rebuke. If you get hit, you get Major Berserk, so like 400 damage, it's stupidly good. You get Major Courage, um, Major Berserk is 10% damage out of those two. So it's just really high damage. You do get a snare, which is a bit annoying, but when you're using the beam, you're snared anyway, so it doesn't really affect us. And we also get 40% damage mitigation at full health on the first hit, so anywhere that tries to gank us, they can't. So <laughs> this is really, really good. I then use Rallying Cry on the other pieces. For the traits, I've gone Infuse on these two, and I've gone Weapon Damage on all of them. If you want to push the damage higher, you can go with Bloodthirsty, that will give you more damage to the target. It's just that Infuse does increase your healing slightly. And I know a lot of our skills are health based on this class, but if you go with Infuse, you can change it to any class, so that's kind of why I did it. But Infuse, Bloodthirsty, both are really good options. That's all the sets. Um, as for the champion points, I'm currently using Fight and Finesse. I'm using Bright and Aura, Thaumaturge, and Ironclad. For the red ones, I have Sustained by Suffering, Pain's Refuge, Bastion increases our shields and also damage to shielded enemies, so we just really good. And Celerity, because I like to just move a bit quicker. And on the green ones, Treasure Hunter, because I sometimes do PvE on this, but Rationer, Liquid Efficiency and Steed Blessing. You can change Treasure Hunter to War Mounts, just have that, just sprint on your horse without draining stamina, it's quite good in PvP, but whatever you want really. But yeah, that's it guys. Honestly, this build is insane. It is so, so tanky, has so much damage, and it's just such a blast to play. As you know, if you've been a subscriber, you've just seen the streams, I've been using this for a while and it's really good. But if you want to see more of it and actually see how does it perform in combat, there is a follow-up video coming out, so do make sure that you are subscribed so you can see that. And as always, I'm going to wrap it up by saying a massive thank you to everybody at Patreon who helps make this video possible, early access, all that good stuff, and just anybody that has commented, liked and subscribed, it helps the algorithm, it helps the channel, and it means a lot. But as always, I'm going to catch you in the next video, guys. So thanks for watching, take care, and bye!